What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power of Play with CJ. Twenty focusing on the Stefan Matteo situation in New Jersey. Uh, Matt Lock and Hockey News did a piece on ten prospects that have fallen in the rankings in recent months, slash the last year or so. And uh, Matt Selgut, I won't fight. I don't disagree at all. Um, and you know, we're talking a little bit about how we got to this point with the former 29th overall pick. Obviously, his father, Stefan Matteo, was. Pretty good bottom six forward, and right now it looks like that's what the younger Matto is going to end up being. Um, you know, I think you look at he's a 21 year old kid, let's not pull the plug on him. He was originally committed to the University of North Dakota, and if he had gone to Dakota, he'd be a junior right now. So, again, let's you know, keep it, and they would actually have one hell of a team this year with him. Um, let's keep it in perspective. The biggest mistake the Devils made was having him in the NHL at 18. That's part of where it comes from. And then, you know, I sent him back to juniors after, you know, 17, 18 games. And then he, you know, essentially quits the Blainville Armada where, you know, his dad was a coach, which is never a good look. And then ended up in the AHL last year and this year. He had 26 points in 67 games last year, 21 points this year uh, through 51 games. But that's not where the, the issue lies for the next step of his development. What New Jersey should have done was send him back to the queue Um Blaineville had traded his rights to Ramuski, and I really think, you know, had he gone up there and the few worked on a scoring touch a little bit more, averaged a point a game, you know, really lit it up, I think that would have been, you know, more beneficial to his development. Instead, he's been kind of a bottom six guy in the AHL, and, uh, you know, for a guy that, you know, they had really, really high hopes for, it's like, you know, he's right now on pace to become a player like his own man, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I think, had they handled his development differently would be at a, um, you know, a different point with him, um, you know, in terms of cracking the Devils lineup and, and all that. You know, he hasn't played an NHL game in, in over in almost two years. Um, you know, he, again, he was up at uh, 18, 19 years old, hasn't been up since. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, you got to look at, you know, everything that's going on. Um, you know, the penalty minutes are down, which is a good sign. He was playing with a little more discipline within the system. But still, it's, uh, it's not the best look to have a guy that was, you know, Playing a couple games on a line with Ilya Kovalchuk two years ago in the minors, not putting up you know great numbers. And I think had last had they done last year in the queue, um, you know he probably could have had himself you know 30, 40 goals with Ramuski, and then uh, you know been in the AHL making that next step. I think you know the last couple of years of development were too up and down to draw a proper gauge on. You look at the Devils, you know organizational depth at forward, it's not there um, in the long term. They got some great prospects on D. Let's let's not you know. Pretend they don't, but you know I think the bigger issue here is you know what are they doing with the forwards? What's Matteo's NHL future? And um, you know those are a lot of questions that got to be asked. You know, and um, you know what's that next step for the Devils organization? Anyway, that's why I got this episode of the Power Play with CJ on the uh, Stefan Matteo situation in New Jersey. Stay tuned for episodes of the season and beyond. Later, guys.